Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today, what we're going to be doing is looking at calculating pH during strong acid-base titrations. The idea here is we're going to start with a strong acid down in our flask, like HCl, and we're going to start with NaOH up here, and we're slowly going to add NaOH down into our HCl. HCl is a strong acid, so it's going to start with an acidic pH, and as I add sodium hydroxide, the pH is going to rise, and eventually the pH will become very basic. And what we're going to do is think about what is the pH after we've added just a little bit of sodium hydroxide, after a fair amount of sodium hydroxide, and lastly after we've added a lot of sodium hydroxide. So the first pH we're going to calculate is when we've added 0.02 liters of 2 molar sodium hydroxide to our 0.1 liters of 1 molar hydrochloric acid. So we have 0.1 uh, or we have one molar hydrochloric acid down in our flask, and we've added just a little bit of sodium hydroxide to it, and we want to know what the pH is. I've broken this process down into four steps, which we'll go through. Remember, these are the steps that will work only for a strong acid-base titration. If you have a weak acid, strong base titration, or something else like that, you have to follow different steps that will involve an equilibrium calculation. All right, so how do we do this? Well, the first step is to write our acid-base reaction. In this case, we are going to take HCl, and we're going to add it to sodium hydroxide, and we are going to get H2O, our water, plus sodium chloride. That's the first step, and we want that to be balanced, and it is. Then we're going to fill in our barf table. Barf. I don't really like barf tables. Barf tables stand for beginning moles, addition, that's what we add to it, our reaction, what do we get after our reaction, and the final moles. All right, so let's start with our beginning moles. We're going to fill in what species we have for each column. And I'll just fill those in in order. Notice that when we start our titration, we have just this. That's what we have at the start. Before we've added any sodium hydroxide. So notice what's happening in this reaction is we're adding sodium hydroxide down into HCl. So before we do that, we have our beginning moles. And notice we have no sodium hydroxide or NaCl before we add our sodium hydroxide. Those concentrations are both zero. The only thing we have is HCl. And I need my beginning moles. It's important here to remember that molarity is equal to moles divided by liters. And if we want to get moles out of there, we have to multiply both sides by liters. So liters times molarity equals moles. So if I want to get moles here for my HCl, I have to do molarity times volume, which in this case is going to be 1.0 molarity times 0.1 liters, which comes from my starting HCl. When I do that, I'll get that I started with 0.1 moles. Cool. Now I'm going to go to my addition row. What did I add? I added 0.02 liters of 2 molar NaOH. So again, if I want to know my addition, I'm going to have to use molarity times liters, which in this case is 2.0 times 0 0.02. And when I do that, I'm going to get 0 0.04 moles. I have to do my barf tables in terms of moles because I'm thinking about a chemical reaction. So I need to know how many molecules there actually are, which is what moles tells me, not concentration. Now reaction. During my reaction, my sodium hydroxide reacts with my HCl. And that means that my, in, uh, my HCl concentration is going to drop because I'm reacting NaOH with it. And it's going to drop by 0 0.04 moles, because that's how much NaOH I reacted with it. Meanwhile, my NaOH is also going to drop by that much. My sodium chloride is a product, so it's going to actually increase by 0 0.04 moles. Okay, what am I going to get for my final moles? Well, here for HCl, I have 0.1 moles minus 0 0.04, which is going to give me 0 0.06 moles. So I have some HCl left over. My NaOH is 0 0.04 minus 0 0.04, so that gives me 0. And my NaCl is that guy. All right. So now I'm ready to calculate my new volume and molarity. So my new volume is the volume I've added. Let's erase some of this stuff up here so I can talk about each variable again, is the volume I uh, added plus the volume I started with. So my volume total is going to be what I added, which is 0 0.02, plus what I started with, which is 0 0.1. When I add those together, I get 0 
My molarity then is going to be equal to moles over liters, and I need my molarity because I'm going to calculate my pH in the next step. And to calculate pH, I need concentration. So what moles do I care about? Well, I care about the moles of my HCl because that's my strong acid. So every single mole of HCl gives me a mole of H3O+, plus, which is what I need to take the negative log of to get pH. So that means I need to do 0.06 moles of HCl divided by the new volume, which is 0.12. Remember that the volume of my flask is increasing as I continue to add stuff to it. And so when I do that division, I'm going to get 0.5 molarity. And now the last step is to calculate my pH. Starting to run out of space here. Let's go ahead and erase my volume to give myself a little more space there. pH is equal to negative log of the concentration of my H3O+. Plus. In this case, because HCl is a strong acid, those are just exactly the same. So all I do is negative log of 0.5 molar. When I do that, I'll get the pH for this step is 0.3. So that's the pH in my flask after I've added just a little bit of sodium hydroxide. Now I'm going to add more. I'm going to fill out a fair amount of my barf table so we don't have to do this each time. This says what is the pH when 0.05 liters of 2 molar NaOH has been added to 0.1 liters of 1 molar HCl. So my beginning moles and my reaction are exactly the same. Now I've just basically continued my titration and I've added more of my sodium hydroxide. So what's my addition this time? Well still it is liters times molarity. So that's two, oops. So that's two for my molarity times 0 0.05 for my volume, which is gonna give me 0 0.1 moles. All right, so the reaction then is gonna drop my HCl concentration by 0 0.1 moles. It's gonna increase my NaCl concentration by 0 0.1 moles. And it's gonna drop H concentration by 0 0.1 moles. Just like we saw before, my reactants are dropping in concentration and my products are increasing in concentration. So I get zero HCl, because it's 1, 0.1 minus 0.1. I get zero NaOH, because it's 0.1 minus 0.1. And I get 0 0.1 moles of NaCl. So now I have none of my acid left and none of my base left. Welcome to the equivalence point. This is where the amount of acid is equal to the amount of base. And since I have no acid or base, I have a neutral solution. And what's the pH of a neutral solution? Seven. So my pH here is seven. I don't have to do any more math. If I end up with zero HCl and zero NaOH, it gives me a pH of seven. That's only true, by the way, for strong acid base titrations. In weak acid, strong base titrations, the pH at the equivalence point will be for a strong acid, strong base titration, the pH is always 7 at the equivalence point. All right, one last calculation. Now we're going to continue past the equivalence point and continue to add sodium hydroxide. So now I've added 0.1 liters. So that's double the volume I had before. My beginning moles is also the same. What changes now is my addition, which is still concentration times volume, which is going to give me 0 0.2 moles. So again, my products drop. How much can my HCl drop by? Can it drop by the full 0 0.2? No, it only has 0 0.1. And that means that's the maximum it can drop by, right? If you have 20 bucks and I come to you asking for 30, you can't give me 30. You can just give me the 20 you have. So the HCl would drop lower if there was more of it, but there's just 0.1, so the most it can drop by is 0.1. That means my NaOH goes down by the same amount. So basically, there's going to be NaOH left. My sodium chloride goes up by 0 0.1 moles, and my final moles is going to be 0 for HCl, 0 0.1 moles for NaOH, and 0 0.1 moles for NaCl. So, filled in the barf table, now I need to calculate my new volume. So my volume total is still the volume I added, which is 0.1, to the volume I started with. So it's 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1, or 0 0.2 liters. And now I'm going to calculate concentration, my molarity. What molarity do I care about now? Well, I would care about my acid, but it's all gone. So which one of these guys is linked to my pH now? Well, just my sodium hydroxide, which means what I need to get at is my concentration of hydroxide ions, so I can calculate the pH there. So when I calculate my molarity, it's going to be for sodium hydroxide, and it's going to be 0 0.1 moles divided by 0 0.2 liters. And that's going to, once again, give me a 0 0.5 molar concentration, but that's of an AOH. So now I can't go and directly calculate pH. I have to calculate pOH first. 
and that's going to be negative log of 0 0.5 molar NaOH, and my pOH is going to be 0 0.3. And then how do I get my pH? Well, I'm going to use this equation down here, which tells me that when I add those two together, I get 14. So if I take 14 and I subtract 0 0.3, I'm going to get my 13.7 as my pH. So think about what's happened here. I started with an acidic pH, I got to an equivalence point where my pH was neutral, and then I continued to add sodium hydroxide, and I got to a basic pH. This is what happens in a strong acid-base titration. If I'm adding base to my acid, my pH slowly rises. And here actually is a graph of what happens to the pH over time. Let's talk about each region. Here, there's more acid than base. And so my pH is acidic. Here, there's more base than acid. So my pH is basic. Notice my y-axis here is pH. And all of these pHs, 0 to 3, those are all acidic pHs. Meanwhile, my pHs at the end of my titration curve are all high pHs. Those are basic because I'm taking a base and adding it to an acid, and my pH slowly rises. My y-axis here, my x-axis here, is volume of sodium hydroxide added. So basically, as I add sodium hydroxide, the pH slowly steps up, and then right at the point when I'm about out of acid, every little bit of sodium hydroxide I add changes it a ton, and that's why it shoots up right there. Let me erase all this mess. So when it shoots up, right here at pH of 7 is when I've had exactly the same amount of acid and base, and that's one of the calculations we did, the middle calculation. And then eventually we get up to the basic region. So this is what the strong acid-base titration curve looks like. Starts at an acidic pH if you're starting with an acid in your flask, and it gets more and more basic. And you'll see this spike when it goes to the equivalence point. And that's, again, think about it, because you're running out of acid down in your flask. They're getting filled up as you add sodium hydroxides. And right when the sodium hydroxide equals the HCl, you get the equivalence point. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. I hope it was helpful. Please leave any questions or comments you have below. You can always subscribe by clicking the little tab. Thanks for watching.